Hey everybody, my name is Clyde and this strange looking albatross of a ship over my shoulder here is the Italian cruiser Michelangelo. Well, Mikey here is the first legitimate attempt by Wargaming at making a secondary cruiser in a very, very long time. And when I say she's a secondary cruiser, she doesn't just have secondaries that are pretty good. She is extremely secondary focused, and that'll be a little more clear as we keep going. She's got some very impressive statistics and some remarkably unique features. Her semi-armor piercing secondary shells give her the absolute highest secondary DPM of any ship in World of Warships. Yes, even higher than whatever ship you're thinking of right now. She's got 320 millimeter main battery guns that fire sap shells, and those are the biggest sap shells fired by any cruiser in World of Warships 2. It's not all good news, of course. Michelangelo has plenty of drawbacks, and we're going to cover each and every one of them in today's review. Bit of a spoiler, this is a very, very unique ship, and any ship that's as unique as this one is going to force you to play it differently than you might naturally want to if you want to be successful. Whenever a ship is as unique as this one, it means that some of you are going to love it, and some of you are absolutely going to hate this boat. Let's dive in. Some of you may be wondering, how does one obtain the Michelangelo? Well, I'm gonna tell you. Starting in update 1211, which comes out later this week, we'll have a new dockyard event featuring 32 phases, five of which you must purchase with the balloons, but the rest can be obtained by completing dockyard missions. Individually, each phase will cost 1,750 doubloons, which is about seven US dollars. So five of those would cost you 35 US dollars. As normal, you can also buy a starter pack of five or 10 phases for 6,000 or 10,000 dubs respectively. That's 24 or 40 US dollars. The five phase starter pack is the cheapest way to get the ship. It'll just cost you those $24 plus the time it takes to do the missions. If you decided to whale all 32 stages without using either of the starter packs, you'd pay $224 for the ship and have it immediately. That's too much money. Don't, don't do that. Taking a look at Michelangelo's consumables, she's got a DCP like every ship you've ever seen in the game and a repair party. Here you can see in my build, it heals about 400 hit points per second. She's got an exhaust smoke generator. This one um, is just like what you expect on other Italian cruisers where you can be on the move and enshrouded in your own smoke. And not all Italian cruisers have sensors. In fact, most of them don't. This one has a hydroacoustic search. Quick facts here about it. We're gonna cover it later. Five kilometer ship detection range. And you can see in my build, I pushed it up to over 145 seconds of action time. This is the premium camo for Michelangelo. It looks kind of reminiscent of the one found on Duca d'Aosta, the tier six Italian cruiser. Um, also a premium ship. This one, of course, is done up in shades of green. It's got the Italian barber pole, whereas the Duca is more of a blue or grayish kind of colored ship. Um, like a lot of premiums, this one has the name of the boat on the back, Michelangelo, which you can read right there. Um, all in all, I think this is a really good looking camo. And of course, it fits in with other Italian ships. And I like that when it feels like it's a part of a set. This is one of my hot take ship reviews. And for each hot take, I compare the ship's capabilities against those of its peers, usually ships of the same tier and class. I rate each capability on a scale of zero to five, with five being the best. And at the end of every hot take, I share with you my build and I tell you why I put the ship together that way. If that sounds simple enough, then fantastic. Let's get to work. First, we're gonna talk about our guns. Now, normally I would spend most of the time in the gun section talking about the main battery of a ship, but the main guns on Michelangelo are actually secondary to her secondary guns. You'll see what I mean. That's not to say that the mains aren't good guns. The 320 millimeter sap is very punchy and it loves to take big chunks of health out of pretty much everything that they hit, especially if you're able to land all eight shells. The AP is okay, but it's only 320 millimeters. At higher tiers, like where you're gonna be fighting most of your battles, the targets you're gonna be shooting at are gonna do better with the sap, or rather you're gonna do better with the sap against those targets. If you do decide to use the AP, and there are times when you should, Keep the shell size in mind and make sure you're choosing targets and angles that make sense. It probably won't break through tougher, thicker turtleback armors. And if it does, it probably won't do much damage. You won't be getting into citadels, things like that. Um, and you will often be able to do just as much damage with the sap shells. I found over time that I just didn't change from the sap that often. And I managed to get pretty good damage just the same. The primary issue with the primary guns is that they're positioned in perhaps the worst possible location on the ship. There's two turrets and they're both located amidships with superstructure towers blocking their direct forward and aft lines of sight. This means that you can't hit anything with the mains that your bow or stern is pointed at. To get both guns on target, you have to be almost entirely broadside, which makes them extremely risky to use, especially if you're facing multiple enemies that can target you from multiple angles. 
This meant that I'd find myself taking these huge hits from the enemy, especially from battleships, and we'll talk more about this when we get to the survivability section. Since the sap works really well, it was actually pretty easy to stack up respectable damage, even with suboptimal firing angles, which is good because you don't want to turn the boat far enough to get an optimal firing angle. Um, they do pin a full 83 millimeters of armor, and they have fairly forgiving ricochet angles as well. Often early in a battle, I'd glance over at my damage and see that I'd already scraped up 35 or even 45,000 damage, thinking that the number should be more like 18 or 20,000 damage. The sap just kind of works that well, and it was always kind of surprising. Now, if they didn't put the main battery where the main battery is supposed to go on a ship, what did they put there? Well, they put secondary guns there. Up front are two turrets, each fitted with four 152 millimeter secondary guns that fire semi-armor piercing shells. A matching third turret, just like those two, is at the back of the ship. Flanking both sides of the boat are 20 more traditional 90 millimeter secondaries arranged in 10 two-barrel turrets, five on each side. The 152s can pen 42 millimeters of armor, and the 90s pen 26 millimeters of armor. The positioning of the 152s means that the ship has really good secondary firing arcs at both ends of the ship, both fore and aft. Of course, this comes at the cost of the main battery firing angles like we've been discussing. This sheer quantity of guns should mean that this thing is a secondary terror, right? In order for a ship to be considered a strong secondary ship, it needs to have three things. Secondary range, secondary DPM or damage per minute, and secondary accuracy. These are basically the holy trinity of secondary combat. If a ship only has one or two of the three, then it is not a good secondary boat. So does Mikey have what it takes? Let's check it out. Michelangelo's secondary range can be built out to a total of 10.5 kilometers, which is honestly a little shorter than some ships that we think of as secondary battleships or secondary cruisers. Luckily, she has a surface detection range of only 11 kilometers, which is frankly ridiculous. What I'm saying is, is the ship is very large and it seems unlikely that it would be so stealthy, but she is that stealthy, so it kind of makes it work. Given her good concealment, I'm gonna say that Mikey has all the range she needs to be considered a good secondary ship. What about secondary DPM? Well, I already said at the top of the video that Michelangelo has the absolute highest secondary DPM of any ship in the world of warships. In the world of warships, whatever, you know what I mean. This is literally the beginning of a new era. It is insane to me that I got to say that in a video. Yes, that means that she has better secondary DPM than Schlieffen, Schroeder, Napoli, Graf Zeppelin, Marseille, any boat that you can think of has less secondary DPM than Michelangelo. The ship has all the DPM that she needs. Do you want to give Michael DPM? I want him to have all the DPM he needs. You're not gonna get my permission on this. I know that, don't you think I know that? Look, people, a lot of ships have good secondary DPM and a lot of ships have good secondary range, but almost no ships have good DPM, good range, and good accuracy in their secondaries. Now, how do we measure accuracy? We use a metric from one of my favorite websites, shiptool.st, which is called hitting DPM. This metric basically measures the amount of total DPM that actually hits a sample target at a given range. Mike's hitting DPM is very good. In fact, at 12 kilometers, it is better than Schroeder's hitting DPM at six kilometers and by almost 14,000 damage, which is a very large gap. Michelangelo is just one of those rare ships that has range, DPM, and accuracy. And this is great news for fans of secondary brawling. The secondaries are so crucial to how this ship is designed that you basically have to build into them because the mains are so poorly placed, you can't just skip the secondaries and do the mains. I'm going to rate the guns for Mike at a four. The mains are a bit difficult to use, but they're very good guns and the secondaries are essentially the best in the game. If the main battery wasn't trapped behind the ship's superstructure, she'd easily take a five in this category. Let's talk about torpedoes. Um, <laughs> Nike's torpedoes hit very, very hard, and I mean it. I mean, they hit really hard. Each torp delivers over 20,000 damage, and they travel at 72 knots, which is pretty fast. The torpedo angles are pretty good, allowing you to torpedo targets ahead of you and behind you, I'd say well enough. Uh, but of course, like most things, Wargaming had to give them some downsides in order to balance out the upsides. The range of these torps is just eight kilometers, which is three kilometers less than her detection range. So unless you're hiding in smoke with your main battery corked, 
you will not be stealth torping anybody in Michelangelo. There's also only two launchers, and they're mounted on the aft end of the ship and completely exposed to enemy fire. To be fair, I don't remember having my launchers knocked out that often during testing, but it does seem like they would be vulnerable to this kind of damage and destruction. She only launches three torpedoes from each launcher, and that limits the amount of ocean that you can fill up with danger fish. All told, I think these are pretty good torpedoes, but their limited range and quantity means they don't really contribute to damage in my experience with the ship that often. When they do hit though, it's pretty devastating, so you should try to use them whenever you can. I'm gonna give the torpedoes a two. For survivability and concealment, Mike has a beefy 66,100 hit points in my build, and frankly, that's a good thing because you tend to go through them. The ship is very thinly armored compared to Napoli, and she just does not shrug off damage like her higher tier sister. Ah, fragile! It must be Italian! I want to talk about how armor works real quick like, and if this kind of topic doesn't excite you, that's fine. You can skip to the next section of the video. It's all bookmarked, so check that out. Um, but I do think that if you stick around and watch this, you'll really enjoy it. At least, I hope you will, because I worked really hard on it. Let's talk about angled armor plating, and we'll use the Italian cruisers Napoli and Michelangelo for this example. Napoli's aggressive turtleback armor forces approaching shells to deal with three layers of armor featuring three different angles. Napoli has a 220 millimeter armor belt that wraps around the outside of the ship, followed by an internal angled turtleback, which features another 30 millimeters of plating. And behind that turtleback plate is a 55 millimeter citadel plate, which is below the waterline. A shell passing through all three of these layers, if it could do it perfectly perpendicularly, would pass through 305 millimeters of armor, except that it is physically impossible for a shell to do that while traveling in a straight line. Layered angled armor plates force incoming shells to pass through more steel because they can't take the shortest path through each successive layer of plating. This effectively thickens the total armor that a shell must pass through in order to detonate in the critical areas of the ship. Michelangelo, on the other hand, has basically none of that. She does have a 200 millimeter armor belt, but behind this, there's no angled turtleback plate. The next stop for incoming ordnance is her above the water citadel. Yes, that's right, it's above the water, and it is wrapped in another 60 millimeters of armor. This brings our total armor plating to 260 millimeters, which isn't that much less than Napoli's 305, except that Napoli has those wonderful plate angles we were talking about. This angle variability makes her 305 millimeter armor act like a much more heavily armored ship. To visualize this, let's take a look at a couple of diagrams. This first diagram shows the relative thickness of both ships' armor as if there was no angling involved. While Napoli's armor is a little bit thicker here, the difference is not particularly impressive. The second diagram angles the plates in the way that they are angled in the model. Yes, I got out a protractor and just measured them. It's probably not the most scientific way to do this, but it should be good enough for the purposes of this illustration. Please note that the spacing in these diagrams is not to scale, but for my purposes, that doesn't matter. I ignored the spacing, which I'm sure some people will freak out about. Next, I drew a straight line showing the path of a shell traveling through the armor, and then I measured the portions of that line that traveled through armor plates. Again, just ignoring the spacing. I took these sections of line and I laid them end to end to make this diagram. The top two bars show the thickness as measured for both Napoli and Michelangelo without taking any angling into account. Basically, you can compare the length of those two bars to see the difference in armor for Napoli and Michelangelo. The two bottom bars take into account the angling of the armor plates that the shells must pass through. And this is a more realistic view of how much armor the shells have to go through. If we look at Napoli's 30 millimeter plate on the lowest bar, it's actually providing more armor to the Napoli than Michelangelo's 60 millimeter citadel plate is that's protecting those critical areas of the ship. This is just one reason why turtleback armor works so well um, and why a lack of it on a ship like Michelangelo is a real problem because of how far forward you're supposed to play that ship in order to take advantage of her secondary armament. There are other reasons like ricochet angles and things like that that also come into play here, um, but that's a topic for another day. When you combine Michelangelo's above water citadel with the lack of a turtleback and her difficult to use main battery placement, she becomes very vulnerable to incoming fire, especially when you're going open a little more broadside to get both of her main battery turrets on target. In addition, her smoke fire penalty is brutal. She's got these monstrous 320 millimeter main batteries 
which means that her detection range becomes 11.1 kilometers after firing in smoke. She has a base detection of 11 kilometers, which is actually quite good, but that means that if you used your smoke because you got spotted, and then you fire your mains, you're instantly spotted again, meaning you wasted your smoke consumable. So don't do that. I learned it the hard way. You have to let your secondaries do the work in that scenario. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. I'm gonna give Michelangelo a three for survivability, but it almost borders on a two. Her concealment is excellent for her size, her hit point pool is large, but her citadel is very exposed and very poorly protected. She can smoke up to hide, but she can't use her guns if enemies are too close, so you've really gotta be careful and learn how best to keep this ship safe because she's not gonna do it for you. Michelangelo's hydros are good, but not exceptional. They locate ships within five kilometers and they last for 100 seconds base, whereas German ships like Schroeder have a 6km hydro that lasts for a full two minutes. Tons of other cruisers have the exact same hydro module as Michelangelo at her same tier, so I'm gonna give her a three out of five for this category. Michelangelo's anti-aircraft capability leaves a lot to be desired. Her long-range AA guns only shoot 4.6 kilometers in a class and tier where six or even 6.9 kilometer AA guns are easily found on her competitors. She ranks 24th out of 30 ships for AA strength on ship tool, and it feels like it. In fact, during testing, I felt the AA was so bad that I had to come to ship tool to compare with Napoli because I didn't remember Napoli's AA guns being so terrible. The reason I didn't remember this is because I primarily play Napoli in clan battles or even in ranked, where CVs have basically been verboten for a very, very long period of time. If you're familiar with Napoli's AA performance because you play her in random battles, then Michelangelo's will be similar. If you only play Napoli in competitive modes like ranked, clan battles, or tournament play, and you've never seen an aircraft carrier with it, you should go look up Napoli's AA because it's not very good, but that's exactly what Michelangelo's AA feels like, though there are some differences. I'm gonna rate uh, Michelangelo's AA at two. She's in the bottom third of her class for both range and damage, which leaves plenty to be desired. It is time to talk maneuverability. Now this ship is not fast. My build has a top speed of just 34.7 knots, whereas my Napoli can reach speeds of 37.3 knots. The rudder shift isn't that great either, 11.5 seconds in my build, and the ship is about four miles long, so she is not going to change direction in a hurry. This means that gamer turns are fairly dangerous, especially if you're playing close to the enemy, like you probably will be in Michelangelo. If you're spotted in your smoke due to radar, hydro, or your incredibly long smoke fire penalty, things can get very serious in a hurry. So make sure you don't come over commit a little too early in the battle in this thing. From an offensive point of view, you need to be constantly reassessing your location relative to that of the enemy. If your team wins your flank, you need to see this coming ahead of time and start moving towards the next battleground. She is so slow that if you wind up in this situation and the enemy team starts running away, whoever is left after you've killed most of them, then you're gonna have a hard time catching up to them and getting damage. And this is actually made worse by the gun placement of the Michelangelo. Let me explain. The fastest way to close the gap on a target is to take an angle where you're basically bow towards them and traveling with a slight angle to where they are headed rather than where they are. Because your mains cannot fire this direction, you will not be able to shoot the enemy while you are pursuing them in the most efficient way. Because you can't do damage and close this distance simultaneously, you have to choose which one you'd like to do. Will you shoot now and drive away from the enemy by turning left or right? Or will you close the distance but be unable to shoot the enemy, and if they're outside your secondary range, get no damage on them whatsoever while your team shoots them because you're spotting. It's kind of annoying, but it doesn't happen that often. It's just a thing that bugged me. I know that they couldn't make this ship fast and give it amazing secondaries because it would simply overrun slower ships and just sort of envelop them in this incredibly dense cloud of secondary fire and death. But at the end of the day, she ain't fast, she doesn't turn well, and that means that she gets a two in the category of maneuverability. Is Michelangelo easy to play? Um, kind of more no than yes. I often say when I get to this section of the video that whatever ship it is, I'm like, well, this ship isn't exactly complicated, but these things make it a little harder than normal. You can apply these common strategies that you already know to achieve success. And that's not exactly true with Mike. There's no ship in the game that plays exactly like Michelangelo. For you to have exceptional performance in this ship, it's gonna come down to aggressive but defensible 
positioning. Defensible. Defensible. That's a hard word to say. If you can find a place where your secondaries and maybe even your torpedoes can get into the mix along with your main battery, you will find that damage comes very, very easily in this ship. And that is awesome when that works out. Her main battery is strong, it's easy to use, and it frequently returns big damage numbers when you hit what you click on. Her secondaries are frankly incredible. They'll shoot over islands and hit ships that you don't even know you can hit because they have good range, good accuracy, and somebody else is spotting something and your secondary gunners figured out that they can plot a trajectory to get them, which is awesome. I find the torps kind of hard to use. It's not impossible to hit with them, but it's not immediately going to happen easily. It's not for free. Um, and when they do hit, of course, it's a thing of beauty. They hit very hard and I'm running pack a punch, which we're going to talk about here when we talk about my commander build later, which pushes the 21,000, 20, 21,000 damage up to about 24, 25,000 damage, which is awesome. I think it's just under 25. She's not very durable and she loves to give up big chunks of hit points whenever the enemy throws like larger shells at her. And if your enemies can capitalize on you making a positioning error, that's a tough day. And because you're trying to play forward, because you pretty much have to build into the secondaries because it's the only way to play this ship that's gonna get you, you know, exciting numbers and exciting gameplay, you're gonna be in a place where you're forward. And that means that people will be able to maneuver to easily get, maybe not easily, but more easily, get angles on you that can surprise you. And that can be frustrating at times. CVs, as soon as this ship comes out, CVs are going to learn pretty quickly that she doesn't have good AA, and they're going to take advantage of that, particularly any of the CVs that have good AP bombs. I'm going to have to rate Michelangelo a 2 for ease of play. I think she's capable of big numbers. She can grind damage pretty easily, but I think that she's just as easily destroyed as she is doing the destroying. And so you're going to really have to work on your survivability techniques, and she's different. She's she's kind of hard to play because you don't have a boat like Michelangelo in your port today. You have boats that have similar attributes, but you don't have a Michelangelo. You don't have a boat with basically weird, hard to use mains on purpose. Um, she's not going to be an easy pickup for folks who aren't willing to put in the work, who aren't willing to practice with her. Um, and I think you are willing to practice with her. That's why you've walked this far into this video. <laughs> so maybe she's for you. I don't know. I don't think she's easy. I'm going to give her a two, like I said. Let's check out the next category. Okay, is Michelangelo fun to play? Um, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, I had several games in this ship that I thought were really, really good for me. Six digit damage numbers, I had kills, I had influential positioning, maybe even I got a cap, right? Or maybe two caps. And the only issue I had is that in a lot of those battles, it felt like I was absolutely under assault and threatened from multiple angles at all times. The games felt like losses when in fact maybe they were wins or maybe they felt like I was playing poorly but in reality I had great numbers at the end of the match. These matches were stressful and they were intense and I like games like that sometimes. Now part of that was me learning to play the ship. She's very foreign. She's not like other ships that I have in my port in a lot of ways and on more than one occasion when I would take a big hit 20, 30,000 damage. These are not exaggerated numbers. I would say out loud to absolutely no one in my office in this room, this ship is such a piece of shit. For me, it was just that the ship was kind of all over the place. I experienced a lot of feelings while I was playing this ship. Some of them were good and some of them were bad. And I, I swear I'm not choosing these words to avoid saying something negative about the ship. I think I've been pretty fair about the ship's strengths as well as its weaknesses in the video up to this point. And that's actually perhaps why my emotions were all over the place while I was learning to play this thing. And then, of course, playing this thing. I had matches where it felt like an incredible triumph. And I had matches that resulted in anger and despair. And maybe for some of you, I'm just describing World of Warships. I think maybe I'm just describing World of Warships. But this ship has some very, very amazing strengths. She is a mixed bag of incredible potential paired with just immense ineptitude. Her main battery is incredible, except that you can't point them in the directions that you want to. Her secondaries are literally the best of any ship in World of Warships, except that she doesn't have any armor that would let her survive in the conditions that you need to be in to use them under normal circumstances. She has smoke, 
that lets her cloak herself in darkness like a Klingon bird of prey. But her smoke fire penalty is so great that if you use the main battery, popping smoke was simply a waste of a consumable about eight times out of 10. There is a lot to like about Michelangelo. She is definitely unique. There is no other ship. I've said this, I don't know how many times I've said this in the video, probably like five times already. There is no other ship in World of Warships like Mike. She brings something to the table that you have never experienced until you've hit the big orange battle button in this thing. And she is not for the faint of heart. You need to be at the epicenter of a battle and you need to be there in a ship that is not the easiest ship to play well. I'm not saying this is a high skill floor ship. I'm not saying that you can't learn it. I think you can. I learned it. I started getting a lot better as I was playing through my test matches personally. But along the way, I had those moments. She is going to frustrate you with crushing defeats. You are going to be so pissed off that you will have to Google some new swear words because the old ones you used to use just aren't getting the job done. But she's going to reward you with epic victories. Stories that are so good, you're gonna save them and tell your buddies the next day at lunch. Stories so good, they're gonna say, dude, you gotta send me the replay. It's such a weird ship because its strengths are so strong and its weaknesses are so weak. And it is very, very much unapologetic about what it is. So is Michelangelo fun to play? Sometimes. <laughs> I wish I could give you a straight yes or no answer. I really do. This is a ship that rewards practice. I had some really fun matches in it, especially after I played it, you know, 10 times, 15 times. Um, I, I, I found that it got better as I got better. And that's, uh, that's obvious, that's a stupid thing to even say. I don't know why I said it, but it's a ship that rewards practice. That is definitely true. I'm gonna give her a three in this category for fun, because I think some of you are going to love this boat and I think some of you are going to hate this boat. <laughs> And I hope that you all learn to love it at least a little bit, at least a little bit, if you get it, if you get it. You don't, nobody has to go get this boat, obviously. I say that about every ship, but anyway, by the time I finished my test games, like I said, I was performing a lot better. And my, my, I, you guys are not surprised to learn that I make a spreadsheet when I'm testing boats and the, the graphs were trending upward. I was getting better. So there's more progression for me in Michelangelo. I can get better and better in it. Um, and I think if I played another 20 games, I'd continue to become more effective. Will we see Michelangelo in competitive modes? Um, I really don't think so. And it's not just because she's a tier nine and a lot of competitive tends to be tier 10. Um, I think that the ship is just too frail to survive a well-coordinated series of plays against her. I think people would get some mileage out of her, perhaps in a tier nine ranked battle, but I don't think we're gonna see her in any competitive modes that are any more coordinated than that. I'm gonna give her a one in this category because I think a skilled team of opponents on voice comms would melt this thing in no time, cutting through her poor armor, using sensors to spot her in her smoke and burning her to death with those 60 second fires. My commander build for Michelangelo. I've got to uh, grease the gears to rotate those guns a little bit faster. I've gone with consumable specialist here. This is actually a uh, keep myself alive pick, basically. It's gonna bring back my smoke and my hydros a little bit faster. Smoke's gonna help me hide. Hydros are gonna let me see bad guy threats that are coming to get me. Torpedoes from subs, destroyers, that kind of thing. Consumables enhancements makes both your smoke and your hydros run 10% longer. That's a good thing. Adrenaline rush increases your damage per minute and all of your armaments there as you take damage in the ship. Superintendent is going to give you an extra heal, an extra smoke, and extra hydros. Who could say no to those things? Pack a punch is basically a skill built for Michelangelo. It is no surprise that this came out last month. And of course, Michelangelo is coming out this patch. This extends the range of your secondaries. Um, and obviously Michelangelo's got all three of the critical components, range, DPM, and accuracy, which means that it is worthy of pack a punch. Ships that only have two or one of those things should not take it. Top grade gunner is gonna give you a 10% second bat secondary battery reload time buff, as well as a main battery reload time buff when you get uh, snuck up on them by bad guys. And then conceal concealment expert is gonna bring you down to 11 kilometers detection range. Taking a look at her uh, upgrades over here, we've got auxiliary armaments modification. Um, this is going to make sure your secondaries stay alive. That's a big part of your damage output. And remember, they can be knocked out and killed. Here, I've gone with a hydroacoustic modification. If you didn't want to spend the coal on this, I would understand it. I think you could actually go with either of these. I feel like my engine did get knocked out a few times while I was playing the boat. But damage control system modification one is going to help you reduce your chances of catching fire. And the ship does have 60 second fires. So that would be a nice boon. Um, secondary modification is pretty much the only recommendation here. You've got to do this because your mains are so un 
I don't say unusable, but difficult to use that you need uh, to lean in on the secondary build. I've gone with steering gears here. This brings your steering uh, or your rudder shift down to 11.5 seconds, which is still not very good. Um, you could deal with that and go with propulsion instead, but I think steering gears is probably the way to go. At least it is for me. I've gone with concealment modification here. Again, part of how we get down to 11 kilometers detection range. And then I went with auxiliary armaments modification too here. It's gonna help you with your secondary reload time. That buffs your DPM, which is great for the secondaries. Originally, I was running main battery mod three. You can see I have one in stock. That's partly why, um, but I did swap for auxiliary armaments and I'm glad I did. I feel like that was a positive change. So that's it, that's Michelangelo. I am dying to know what you guys think of this boat, having seen this review and maybe any others that you've watched on YouTube. Are you gonna get yourself a Michelangelo? Is this one you're gonna skip? Is it too crazy for you? Or are you brave enough to say, nah, man, I can handle it. I'm gonna go get that secondary monster and see how she does. I think a lot of people are gonna get this boat because it's a dockyard and it's something to do. There is a ton to do this month. You've got the snowflakes, you've got the holidays in Santa City, you've got the dockyard. You don't have to do all of it, but I'm curious what people are gonna choose to do. Let me know, like I said in the comments, if you're gonna get the boat or not. If you have any questions about it, let me know. Stop by the Twitch stream we can play it for you on there and answer any questions you might have live if that's something of interest to you or you can join the discord we can talk about the boat in there as well um with all of that said thank you so much for watching this and everything else on clyde plays whether it's here or on twitch um and uh we will catch you in our next battle live stream or video um until then take care of each other be cool be nice and we'll see you around bye some very impressive, impressive, that's not a word. Old Mikey here is a legitimate attempt by the, f by the, by the f over in board gaming. What did I, what was I going to say? Why did I start that word with an F? Now, it's not all good news, of course. Michelangelo has, pl Michelangelo, that doesn't feel like a real word. These are basically the holy trinidad, trinidor, trinidad, troubadour. These are basically the holy troubadour of burbadurbler, 30 millimeters of armor plating. Behind that 30 miller, why is it so hard to say words? They're all words I'm good at. Clyde here, and this is a boat. It's a boat.